up until this point, within this topic, we've entirely been looking at investments, right? So this is where more money is better. We're putting money in and it's getting larger and larger and larger. So superannuation in this example, an investment, right? Or just your stock standard bank account, you put money in, bank pays you interest, okay? But now we're flipping the script, and this is very important because, of course, if you're gonna learn anything about managing money, this is one of the things that you're all gonna start doing pretty rapidly. You're gonna go into debt, hurrah, okay? Now, debt's not a bad thing if it gets you something useful, like, you know, tertiary study, or a car, or a place to live, right? So we're borrowing, let's jot down some important information here, that $2,000, this is the principal, right? So the principal, is a word that means different things in different contexts and here it's what we're borrowing as opposed to what we start off investing okay since we're in a repayment type situation i've given us an interest rate of six percent per annum in the absence of any information about compounding period what do you assume the compounding period to be annually, annually per year right they haven't told you anything else so you just go with it okay each year you make a repayment of $500. So $500, we'll call that the repayment. Which means that if we had no interest in this situation, how long would you expect to take this to pay off? Four years, four times $500. Simple, right? Now, admittedly, I've given you really small and easy to handle numbers. That's because part of what we're headed toward in this lesson is to visualize what's going on after we do all these calculations. Ordinarily, this number would be a whole lot larger, and this number would be a much smaller in proportion, okay? But this is just gonna be easier for us to understand what's going on. We don't need to make the numbers complicated now, all right? Now look closely. Remember I said to you before when we're doing any kind of question like this, right? You have to be careful about defining your terms. This is such a routinely badly done thing that often the question, like HSE does this all the time and your internal exams as well, they'll just go ahead and they'll define it for you, okay? Um, as a small thing, it's not just to help you, it's to help us too. This means we're all on the same page, because if you all define your terms differently as a marker, I'm like, oh man, which, which path have they taken to? It's extra confusing, okay? So we're looking for an A of N, which is when? When is it? End of the nth year. End of the nth year. If they specify that, it's important, okay? Now, what's really nice about this is just looking on the board, you can see, we've seen this a few times, right? There are gonna be two things that happen every single year, right? Two things happen every single year. There's gonna be an interest calculation, and then there's gonna be a repayment, right? Now, so far in the questions we've looked at, right? We tend to put in a deposit, and then we get interest later, okay? Deposit early, interest later. Now that's because so far we've been looking at us investing money in and trying to get interest off of the bank, okay? So this is an investment situation when you are investing. Now why do you think, this is not a rhetorical question and it's a really like basic sort of human, human nature question, why do you think banks do it like this and not the other way around? Why do you think banks don't pay us the interest first, but wait until later? Any suggestions? Like suppose you're the bank, do you want to give money to your clients sooner or later? later. Clearly later, right? You want to hold on to that money as long as you can before being obliged to pay it out, okay? That's when you're investing. But right now, we are borrowing. So, again, imagine you're the bank and thinking about what makes this most advantageous to you. Do you think you're going to do it in this order? No, you are not. You're going to do it in reverse, right? Interest, when someone's investing, right, it's good for the person investing. So that's why they delay it, right? But in a borrowing situation, interest is better for the person who's lending. So they're going to charge you interest right away, okay? So this happens... What did I say? This happens early and this happens later. Now this is really important for how we set up our equations. So here's what I'm going to begin by writing out. Here's our, our setup, okay? And what I'm gonna say is at the beginning of the year, 
Because the interest happens first, right? We start with the principal. We already said that that's 2,000. And then the interest goes on right away, right? So I think you guys know where this number comes from, right? This is our 1 plus R in our compound interest formula, right? So this is the beginning of year one. I've written it out in full words because now I can go to the end and I can say A1. Now we're going to be at the end of the year. So what happens? This is what's already in there. And then this changes. So we're subtracting 500, right? We're reducing the amount that's in there, right? So this is 2,000. The interest has already been applied. And then we make our repayment. So far, so good, OK? Now, noting that these two things happen every single year, this first and this second. I'm going to hand over to you. I'll give you like 45 seconds. Remember what we need to do next? I've got A1. I need to establish a pattern. How many more terms do I need? I need two more, right? I need A2 and I need A3. Can you go ahead and do that for me? And then I'll have it on the board for you in a moment. All right. So. I'm hoping by now you've caught up. Let me just make it really obvious what's going on. I need my colors here, right? Remember, two things happen every single year, right? So looking at how I've written A2, if I just cover off this, right? Do you see what I've done? Can you use words to describe? What's the action I've applied to everything in A1? I've multiplied by 1.06. I've applied interest. Does that make sense? So you see that with this index up here, and then it appears for the first time over here. And then the second thing is this color, ta da, my repayment happens at the end of the year. So far, so good. And then I apply it one more time, and you can see I've not just to save some space in my column, but also to sort of highlight that all of these terms are happening together. These repayments are forming the GP that we're interested in. Following so far? All right. Now, we were careful about defining our terms. We established the pattern. And I just said GP, right? So on this next line, I'm going to stay with A3 before I get to the AN, the general term. What I'm going to do is try and make super obvious where the GP is. So I've got this term just kind of hanging out the front, right? This is important. It's not part of the GP because there's 2,000 of them, not 500. But now, next, I can pull out a common factor, right? Now, given that they're all subtracted, why don't we subtract this as well? And there's that 500 you're seeing over and over again, OK? Now, what will I write in the brackets? Look closely. I'll write it in the order that's provided here so far. The first term's going to be 1.06. Squared, right? I can think of it in a different order in a minute, but while I'm doing the factorization, I'll do it in the same order, just to make it super obvious, right? Because I took out a minus, the next term's going to be a plus 1.06, just one of them, right? And then lastly, we add one. That's the final repayment on the end there, okay? This is the right moment to call out the GP, right? So here it is, right here. This is a GP with. Now, what would we like to call the first term? This is where we can think about it in whichever order is most convenient to us, right? So which do you think is the easiest order? Which term would you like to put first? I'm going to start over here. Is that OK? Right? A, the first term is 1. What's my ratio? 1.06. By the way, this is why I prefer to think of it in this order. If I thought of it in this order, I'd have to make a gross fraction here, right? 1 over 1.06. Why bother? Okay. And lastly, how many terms? We can count, right? 1, 2, 3. That's how many terms I've got in this case, right? So now I can actually fairly easily generalize from here, right? I'm ready to say. A and equals. All right. Now, because I've got the right numbers here, and I might just highlight it here with a color to make it super obvious, there's the 3, and there's the 3, and this here, that's 3 minus 1. That's why it's 2, right? So therefore, when I go and produce the nth term here, I'm going to have 2,000 times 1.06 to the power of n minus 500, and then this new series that I'm going to form in here, it'll be 1.06 to the power of 1 less than that. You okay with that? Plus 1.06, 1 less than that, all the way down 
to 1. Okay? So at this point, having already identified the GP, can I ask you, from this, give me the sum of a GP. You know the formula, you know all the right bits to put inside it. Can I give you a moment to write that fraction? In this scenario, I didn't pose you a question, but I hope a question's kind of implied, right? We already decided that if there were no interest calculations applied, this thing would take us four years to repay, right? So what's the most obvious question to ask now that we do have interest applied? How long is it going to take now, right? How many years will this take? So pause for a minute before you write anything down. I've got this big equation here. I need to do something to it, just like I did with the review questions, that sort of implies, right, now that I know I'm aiming towards this thing being repaid, what do I want this thing to be equal to? Go ahead, Sam. Zero. I want it to be equal to zero, right? Now, keep in mind, because of these interest calculations are going to add different amounts every year, we're probably not going to land exactly on zero. So we're going to have some value for n that's like weird decimal places and that kind of thing. You will definitely need your calculator for this, right? But before we can get that, we need to make n the subject of this equation. And there's kind of a fair bit of work. I also forgot to write that n. There's kind of a fair bit of work here for me to clean that up, OK? So I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to say, for loan to be repaid, a n equals 0. And now I'm going to set you to work. I'll give you two or three minutes to do this, and you're welcome to compare with the person next to you. We're trying to make n the subject of this equation, but there's a lot of disentangling that we need to do because, firstly, the n is in two spots right there, and secondly, it's up in the index, right? So we're going to need to use what knowledge are we going to use to get the n out of that index? We're going to need logs, right? It's an exponential equation right now. So we're going to have to tidy it up and get it into a nice, neat exponential equation. Then we can rephrase, OK? So let me give you a few minutes to do that. And then we'll come back together. I'll show you what the working looks like.